Here we go. Sit. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Nora Show. Today we have a three parter. The first part is going to be uh, a, a small discussion, itty bitty small part of discussing hair. The second part will be discussing prior sewn dresses that I'm going to model and then we're going to cover a very brief section on a side sewing project. So this will be fun. Let's get started. Let's talk hair. This is an experiment. I'm not entirely sure if this is going to work. I typically do a wet set pin curl, which they there are two million of these on YouTube. I I guess I could do one at some point, but I still I, I'm 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 a sewer, not necessarily a hair individual. For my hair to dry overnight, it is now up to about nine hours, solidly, that I have to leave my hair alone, which is why you're getting a lot of this in camera because I'm having trouble figuring out when I can do this because if I get to bed too late, this doesn't work. I am fascinated by um, the 1920s, 1930s finger, uh, the finger waves. Now my hair is incredibly straight and I have tried this multiple different ways over time. The easiest one that I have found so far is to actually wet set pin curl my hair, take everything out and then alligator clip it and then spray it one more time, get it a little damp, let that dry, hit it with a lot of hairspray and go from there. And then because I have so much hair, um, roll it up in the back. Right now it's just a low bun on the nape of my neck actually very comfortable. Today I'm trying a from completely straight bone dry hair of just trying to get a general wave going then I sprayed this down. I'll take out the clips later and see what happens. If this works this would be a I didn't have time to do my hair the night before. I did my hair in the morning and it was relatively fast. I'm looking for a hairdo that I can do quickly and with long hair because I am anticipating that at some point those wet set pin curls are going to, my hair is going to get too long, too thick, and it's not going to dry at all. So I'm going to need an, a, a hair alternative for extremely long hair that's extremely straight and takes a while to dry, even in a dry climate. So this is an experiment. The first dress that I sewed, that I dropped and sewed, was this one. This may be one of my favorites. I know that I made a mistake on the sleeve. This is entirely too big by about three inches. And I know that I made, I don't know what I did wrong, but I know that it's too big. It's not a major problem. It just could possibly use a tuck right here with a cute little button to actually make this a little bit more shaped. That's not hard to do, and it doesn't even require a buttonhole. I just need to tack it down. I could probably do this in about five minutes, and I fully intend on doing that on a sewing mending day, which usually happens after laundry and ironing. Well, before ironing, after laundry. The buttonholes are a little bit spaced together. This is what a two inch buttonhole uh, span looks like. It's a little small, but it looks very nice going down and I had a lot of the white plasticky buttons that go fairly well. Not vintage, but they go well. I love the eyelet lace that I did on this one. This kind of thing makes me glad that I have experience in quilting. This is the kind of thing that helps make sure that you get very nice straight lines when you start joining things together. This is called a mistake that I got very lucky because the collar covers it up. When you slice open a buttonhole and you've done it on the machine, you sew the buttons, uh, the, the, the button lining first and then you cut it open. Some people say scissors. I like the X-Acto knife, 
Well, whatever you do, don't do the X-Acto knife in the air. You must do it on a cutting mat and you must have everything controlled. I did not. I have a theme running in each one of these dresses where I said I was going to sew down the dart. I did not. I overlapped it, I pleated it, and that is all I have done on every single one of these dresses. I don't know if it was because of a lack of confidence. There is a possibility of that, that I just completely didn't have any confidence in the fitting of this and that I was afraid that I was gonna hug my hips too tight because I got ample hips, so I get nervous about that. So the next time I have to sew a dart, I'm gonna do it with bravery. So that's dress number one. This dress came out of this pattern book. I found this one on Amazon. As you can see on this dress, you've got a little slanted pocket thing going on, which was adorable and the primary reason why I was making this dress. But I completely missed that when cutting everything out, so I ended up having to do uh, little pockets. And I decided to do these. I think everything looks lovely and fine and absolutely fantastic. My only complaint is that I seem to have gotten very confused about the front of the, uh, the skirt and exactly how that went together with the lines. As it is, I already know that I was confused about the skirt, so this isn't exactly a surprise because if I wasn't confused about the skirt, I'd have completely different pockets on there. As it is, completely functional and wearable. I do actually think that after trying everything on, this is the best fitting dress that I've got. Next dress I made was on page number three of the same book. This green dress was a little bit of an issue because I couldn't quite figure out how I was supposed to get into the dress. So in the end, I decided to insert a zipper on the side. I did not use an invisible zipper because those didn't exist at the time. Now, my only issue with having a zipper in this dress is because this is hypothetically right around World War II and your zippers were made of metal and that wasn't a thing that you were gonna be able to get away with for very long during that exact time period. I would not say that I insert zippers fantastic. I'd say that it's very, it's in. This sleeve was also slightly too big, but you can also see where I put the little button and tacked it. I would like to actually move that in just a little bit more. The only thing I have to do is make sure that it gets over my elbow so that I don't have to button and not button. Actually, this looks like, a, oh, I buttoned it. Oh, there's a button hole here. So in this one, I can move this button anywhere I want because I have a button hole that can just button. It's not tacked. I don't remember doing that. That's funny. Ooh can't do this with nails. Oh, got it. There is no possibility that there isn't a little bit of a gather here because the way this is done in the pattern, it, this is all one piece, there's a cut, gather, and then you sew it in. This has to have a little bit of a thing here. So I'm not entirely sure what they were planning on or if that's, that's a thing. If I ever end up with a dress like this in my closet from the time period, I would be very fascinated to see exactly how that laid. This side almost seems a little bit better, but it also seems a little bit further away because, well, this is going to, 
that's what comes under. So yeah, it is. As it is, I very much like it. I think this comes down to me being very, very worried about having a house dress that is too tight in the waist and me trying to actually do stuff. Again, the idea behind house dresses is that you're functional, that you can actually move through your day, do everything you need to do, and be comfortable and have the mobility to do stuff. So far, we're good on that. This collar didn't come out quite as curved and as cute as this collar in the picture, but it was a first try and I would have to say that my collars, I should feel a little bit more willing to uh, play with the design as I draw them out. I feel very much encouraged to do that. So that's dress number two. purchased off of Mrs. Depew. I have nothing but serious respect for Mrs. Depew's site. I am currently not sponsored by Mrs. Depew. Would not mind if that happened, however, because she's awesome. This is a Haslam System of Dress Cutting Book of Draftings for Lingerie number seven. This will be from the 1940s. Because it still has a few of the puffier sleeves I'm going to say that this is early 1940s, easily within the World War II time range, and has a delightful page of both of the aprons that I sewed and this house dress. I know that I've been saying that this is my favorite one. This is my favorite one. No, this is my favorite one. They're all my favorites at this point, but I love this fabric. This fabric is delightful. When finished with this dress and trying it on and then wearing it for a few hours, I have noticed that the, the shirt has a tendency to pull up and back and then I end up like this huge thing in the back and everything starts pulling. That says that I have a sizing issue with my sloper. I think that um, my bust has been drawn too small and that I have not taken into account the broad chest area that I have. See, I have an unusually large armpit. <laughs> I can't say that without a straight fit. <laughs> Let me try that again. I have an unusually large armpit by a couple of inches. It's why if I go to a regular store and try on a t-shirt, a good portion of the time, it's jammed up in my armpit. It's very uncomfortable. That's part of the reason why also just sewing in general doesn't work. I really do have to draft my own patterns because otherwise it's going to fit really wonky or be jamming up into my armpits. No fun at all. So what I want to do is, I, I need to go back into my sloper and I need to check one, the armpit region. I think that I cut it out a little too wide and may have come in too far here. Then the sleeve is being pulled in on this side 
and I think that um, I need to check the lines from here to here and from here to here and make sure that I've got that correct. And I've got little dog hairs everywhere. You're so cute. I don't care. All right, so favorite dress, but I want it to fit better. Hypothetically, this should have the best fit on me. This is exact to what my sloper says. It's got a little, it's tight through here. This upper bust region from shoulder to shoulder is just tight. This dress was just the beginning of me saying, I think that my sloper from here to here needs adjustment. When I sewed this dress with a full expectation of, I think this might be my best fitting dress, it should be. It followed that sloper pattern line really well. There was not a whole lot of altering of where everything was sewn together or lining up. So at that point, I'm gonna say that the sloper absolutely needs a little bit of tweaking. But that's why I started with house dresses. Cotton is cheap, cotton is easy to find, it's easy to work with. You're not want, it, it, it is breathtakingly beautiful to begin with. And since it's not as expensive as let's say silk that is thick and lovely and luscious, I'm not starting with that. I want this sloper absolutely perfect before I go on and try to make anything from a, a fitted 1950s evening gown or a 1930s draped something or other. Although that is a completely different skill. Draping is a completely different skill from pattern drafting. I don't have draft. I don't have draping yet. That's on. That's a. Pl that's planned. We'll get there. This is yet another dress that I did not sew the the darts in the skirt like I said I was going to, like I actually drew out that I was supposed to. I apparently shy away from that deeply. I will keep that in mind next time. However, this is the correct sleeve for pretty much all of these dresses. I redid my sleeve, checked my measurements, have no idea what I did wrong on the first one, but this is so much better and it sits delightful. Belts will have to be addressed at some point. I'm okay with a utilitarian belt. This is 1940s dresses. It's about as correct as it gets. I think that pretty much sums up my 1940s dresses. For the last part of this video, we are going to take a look at one of my side sewing projects. This one was a relatively fast, relatively simple project, but it was for my kids' uh, distance learning class that they are in, and I wanted to do a group art project. It's up my alley. A few months ago, I asked my kids and their fellow classmates to decorate some fabric squares with their art. This video shows what happened to those squares after I got them back. I first sewed the individual squares into long strips. After all of the squares were sewn into lines of squares, I sewed the lines of squares together.
Ironing everything flat is very important to get it to lay right. I do a lot of vacuuming in this room because I do throw all of my threads on the floor and not a trash can. This is the back of the quilt. A quilt is like a sandwich of a bottom plain fabric, a middle part that is fluffy and warm, and the top quilt squares. All three layers are bobby pinned together so that they don't shift and move. Pin in random order so that the material doesn't scooch on you while you're pinning. This is the actual quilting part of a quilt. You sew wavy random lines or you are amazing and do a design. I sew wavy lines. sewing on what is called a binding. It covers up all of the sides of the fabric sandwich. The first part is sewn on a machine. Part of the quilt is hand sewing the back of the binding to the back of the quilt so that the stitches don't show on the front. 